Man, super, super interesting. So uh, I figured out why um, I like the markets so much. Um, I, I think about, like, the markets dominate my thoughts. And uh, I've since I was young, like, it's this isn't, like, new. Like, since I was a little boy, I, I've always been fascinated with the fact that you could use your brain uh, to make more money. And, you know, like, because I, I, I from, a, from a young age, the, uh, the, the harder of the labors was always instilled into me by my, by my parents, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the, there's, there's hard labor. Manual labor. Manual, Manual labor. Manual yeah. labor. And, and there's dignity in, in work, by the way. And so, but I was like, how do we do this where it doesn't hurt the next day, you know? Like, but I always thought that it was interesting that you could apply uh, your brain and, and go ahead and make more money. And I, I think about that constantly. And the reason why I love markets so much, and I don't care how long you've been doing uh, stocks, uh, you know, investing or trading. And look, let's separate it here a little bit. Um, I don't begrudge anybody who makes money, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you, whether you, you bet, you bet the farm on uh, GameStop earlier in the year and it turned out great, mm-hmm. or or you're the person that there's a trader out there that uh, maybe Alex knows. I, I I always defer to Alex as the king of crypto. I'm not sure if he is or not, but uh, I just <laughs> I just think not. you know I'll ask Alex <laughs> if he knows this. But like there's a dude out there that's made a billion dollars on Doge, like the Dogecoin, uh, like billion. when it was tenths tenths of a cent. Uh, Holy cow! D- an eight thousand dollar bet is turned into over a billion dollars, um, and it, yeah, an eight thousand dollar bet is turned into over a billion dollars. I find that stuff interesting. I certainly don't begrudge it. Wish it was me. Has uh, he cashed it in yet, though? Has no, he sold no, it? No yeah. idea. The Doge mm-hmm. is a mystery, but um, <laughs> always has been. always has been. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, I think about how much there is to learn about the markets every year, and it, but it, it that goes to my person. But where I was getting with, I don't begrudge people how they make money. If you're just someone who was smart enough to buy things and hold them, great. If someone someone might dog you and say, well, that doesn't take a lot of skill. No, it actually does. It takes the ability to have patience. Uh, and as Nick Sirianni would say, the head coach of Philadelphia Eagles, you got to let your roots grow where your flowers <laughs> are planted. And so, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, other meaning uh, you got to take your lumps and big losses. Is that no, no, you got to, you got to, you got to let your roots grow, and then eventually, what you've been nurturing will flourish into a beautiful uh, eight and seven flower. And so. Um, or you can, if you choose to herb admire it and bump and grind, you end up with nothing. And so, uh, wow. And so, uh, <laughs> six, one, half a dozen, the other. Yeah. But the reason why I like the markets so much is because there's something to learn. And whether you're learning it about yourself, which is often, uh, I've, I've said markets are 90% psychology, like all the time. You and Danny and I would, I would answer like, markets are like 90% psychology. You're fighting you. You have to do the opposite of what you want to do most times in the market. And I find that kind of study very interesting. I find the different ways to see the E, like how can I make, how can I make the act of trying to make money more easy for my eyes to see? And that's what draws me to the markets each and every day. To me, it's not a casino. I know some of you treat it like a casino. You don't want to admit to it, but you feel the compulsion to trade every day, like, like you need it, like you need a fix. And you're like, well, I'm not addicted to the markets, but you're addicted to the act of doing something. And that act of doing something makes you feel like you're, you're, you're positively affecting your net liquidating value. And that's what you have after you, your trades are closed and you've paid all the fees. That's your uh, net liquidating value. And your net liquidating value of life oftentimes isn't for the fact that you're taking action. And I like that about the markets. And I've often, uh, I don't ever, I've never perceived myself, uh, Danny will insert a joke here, but I've never perceived myself to be the smartest person in a room. I, and as a matter of fact, I eschew it. Look at Danny, he can't, he almost. <laughs> oh, he took away my almost, thunder, now it's no fun. Now it's, just, <laughs> now it's just kicking a dog when he's down. <laughs> I mean, it's, up, it's too easy. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't help easy. himself. I just know, I know, I've been around Danny too long. But uh, I eschew it because I want, I want to learn. Like, I, I thirst for knowledge. I thirst for people smarter than me. Um, and I thirst to want to learn what they've learned. So That's why you hang around me so much. <laughs> right. That's why. <laughs> is, is this <laughs> I, You tell me, Zach. You're <laughs> at the altar of the master. Oh, hey, come on. Yes. Come on. I, I, I refrained on the first one. That's true. But I, I couldn't let the second one pass. I was so. going to ask Zach if the silence was awkward after. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> so so I this this time of year is often my favorite time of year to talk stocks and markets and the the church of finance, the the cathedral of finance with you stocks and market lovers. Um, <laughs> because I uh, I think there's a lot to be gained from this year. And uh, it's not hindsight. I don't like the act of hindsight. What you're going to hear today is like, well, Jim, of course it's all clear in hindsight. But I think you can use what we discussed today um, as I as I go into uh, – I've got the video. We're taping the show Wednesday, uh, December 29th mm-hmm. in the afternoon. A couple days early. A couple days early. Yes. Uh, I'm going to do I, – I consider this almost two parts, the podcast, and then I've got the video this evening where I'll continue uh, – with the uh, Wednesday sermon here, so to speak. But I think there's legitimate strategy that you can apply in 2022 to positively affect your your, uh, your net liquidating value. Um, I think uh, there's some resolutions we can apply. I'm going to ask the fellows what their market resolutions are uh, coming up here in a moment. Um, I'm going to ask Danny what he thinks uh, J-PAL's policy should be to ensure the smoothest transition from um, really what we have are negative rates in this country. If you take inflation plus the low interest rates, you have negative, you have negative rates. Now, they're not stated as negative. Well, negative returns. Negative yeah. returns. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, they're not stated as such. You know, we're not Europe over here, Daniel. <laughs> Where they're actually truly negative. Yeah. <laughs> Our chocolate isn't as good. Um, can't beat that Swiss chocolate, right? Well, Hershey's? Hey, no. <laughs> Now, you know, interesting story about the Hershey's. No, no. no true story. I used to walk in the, work in the Hershey vault. So I grew up uh, not too far away. You know, look at that. Look from that. Hershey, Pennsylvania? Yeah, I grew up not too far away from Hershey, Pennsylvania. The Hershey forty-five. Vault. Yeah, so yeah. Hershey, uh, there's Hershey Foods, and then there's Hershey Park, the amusement park associated with uh, Hershey. And so um, they, I, I got a job there, like an internship in college for two seasons. And you, this is the mid-'90s, so you'd literally walk into a giant safe. Like it was a vault inside of the arena. If anyone's familiar with the area, it's the ice skating arena with Hershey Bears play. And you go in, you, you had to get buzzed in like a couple different doors, and then you'd get, and we would literally count a, a couple million dollars a night. It st- shift started like at four, three or four Oof. o'clock. Wow. And you would go till the money was done. Mm. And it, you know, on the weekends, a couple million dollars all by hand. Like they, wow. we had machines, yeah. but you had, to, you had to first sort it. And then uh, this is before plastic was so prevalent. And then, uh, and the machine was a couple million dollars itself. I went to Starbucks uh, when we did the Christmas tree hunt and hot chocolate rodeo with the kids. And the person, they were switching out shifts and they were switching out drawers, whatever they do. And uh, I was uh, the person behind the counter. I said, people still pay with cash. Like that was my very first question. She mm-hmm. goes, oh, yeah, we do about $800 of cash a day. And I looked at her and she had a scale. Um, it was a scale. She took the twenties, so fine that it, and she right. put it on the scale. And I looked at her and I said, "That's how you're counting the money." She goes, "Yep, there's a there's there's six hundred dollars." I'm by like, "Wait." She counted it by weight. I well, was, the scales are so fine now. So I, so I, Pablo Escobar did it. I, I, I'm like, <laughs> how do you account for the cocaine? That's, that's that's not all he was weighing on yeah. the scales. I, <laughs> yeah, I think it's how do you account for the extra weight? Which which by the way, tell, I, I can't begin to tell you how dirty money is. Everybody, most people know this, but when you count it by hand for uh, a couple summers, yeah. uh, it is the most dirty. Yeah, thing. you get like grime on your hands. Oh, sweet baby Jesus! Builds man. immunity. Man, yeah, well, we, maybe beauty. maybe we got to go back and get that for the Omicron. Yeah. Yep. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. Hop in our DeLorean. Yeah, let's that. go back. Let's get yeah. that scum off my hands That's and, and put it into the mixer and yeah. uh, let's spin up a new mRNA Call vaccine. Boys lab. Yep. Uh, Daniel Stort Labs. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> I digress. I invest in that company. <laughs> Me too. I would too. <laughs> Big on that. Hunter with the dagger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So he spice up his vaccines with his. Yeah, it's, it's what is it? Well, it's cayenne cumin. Pepper. It's cayenne peppers. <laughs> it's yeah. some serranos. Some of my rub. <laughs> some some of his rub, and then a jalapeno to taste. Yeah, it's perfect. Not not an actual actual precise recipe. Just just something he whips up in a vat. It'll cure what ails you. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's Danny's spice rub and ivermectin. That's what's <laughs> that's that's what's. That's what's curing the coronavirus. Oh, it's a paste you apply. You don't even ingest it. You just rub it all over your body. Head on. Yeah. Pfizer's, <laughs> Pfizer's, <laughs> Pfizer's applying for the patent. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Danny Spice They rubbing. called me yesterday. <laughs> Danny's, Danny's meat tenderizer and corona killer. You heard it here first, folks. 
My gosh. <laughs> So crazy. Right, before I Man, do if it other... worked, I'd be like that guy with the eight thousand dollar Deutsche coin. Yeah, I'd be a billionaire. Doge oh, yeah. coin, not <laughs> Deutsche coin. I said Deutsche coin. Doge no, coin. Doge. <laughs> Doge. 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 The O is different Doge. than what you're Doge. saying. Yeah. You're saying Deutsche. I Deutsche sort... Bank. Deutsche. Yeah, no, it's Doge. 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 <laughs> and that's your show, folks. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, by, the, by the way, before we move on and before we forget, because right. I don't want you know, it's kind of the circle of life. Um, Tim, you still have your armband. Congratulations. Oh. Tim just had a new baby. Oh, yes. yes. You still have it uh, on there. So the baby. You still have the baby. The baby. Yep. Yes, we thank you. We still have it. So congratulations. Still and, and prayers yes. for Don's family. His yes. mom is, is very ill. Oh, so. yes. Absolutely. So. Oh, By the way, we should probably. Uh, so listen, stock nerds, we're. Um, you don't, you don't. If they're not, if they're not getting made fun of, you're not loved, uh, and so that is that's the typical guy code, right? If you're not, you and I are very loved. Tim. Yeah, yeah, we're very, very loved. loved. I don't know what Danny. <laughs> Danny made a. I can't see this the monitors, but Danny made a poignant thought about Don and his mother, and we're we're completely serious about that, but. When we were going on before the show, we were trying to figure out what picture to have on the screen for Don. And I don't know if there's a picture on the screen of Don when Danny made his heartfelt appeal for prayers there for Don's family. Uh, well, I've got one now, but it's not the best. You know, I'll switch to something. <laughs> okay. More I just wanted amicable. to get you out of a, out of a bind, Zach. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I You didn't see the Danny. You, I, No one sees the Danny Definitely heartfelt train. Yeah. And so I'm like, did because the picture we were discussing of using Don was either Don making a snowman or Don in the <laughs> New Year's are, Eve. To be fair, these are all good photos of Done. Oh, I, okay. I think, New Year's yeah. baby. He's got yeah. some good ones. Oh, if you're fair. listening awesome. to the show, check us out on YouTube. And, <laughs> fair enough. Okay. Yeah. So making money with the markets. So let me show you something that I find super interesting about the month of December here. And I don't know how many people know this. And I went and did the work myself because I, 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 there's a force that's a little different in the markets right now, I feel. And so let me show you Hormel here. Uh, Hormel. Let me, get this, let me get this on a year-to-date chart. So I'm going to go daily chart here, folks. And here's, here's what I want to... Caution against um, warning stock nerds. I'm going to be flipping through some charts here, and I'm going to be talking. And I apologize for all of that. <laughs> <laughs> In advance. <laughs> In advance. But if I lose you along the way because you're like, Tim, you're going too fast, or you keep flipping, I don't know what your, 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 your thoughts are ahead of your charts or vice versa, just listen. You can always pause the video. <clears throat> You can always listen. You can always stock nerds email any one of us. Uh, Tim at Revere Asset, Dan at Revere Asset, Don, Hunter, Alex at Revere Asset, or just call us 855 Real Wealth. We're, we're always here to, to help you, even, even during this holiday week. Um, but I, wa I want to show you something I find that's super interesting. So here's Hormel uh, from 12 1. So I've got 12 1 kind of highlighted right in this zone here. And Hormel gets a little white bar chart there. We'll talk about that in a minute. But Hormel's up 15% so far for the month. Okay. I, and and so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not just going to read. I'm going to do a bunch of stocks here, but I'm, I'm just trying to make a point to set up my next point. Here's Procter and Gamble up 12 percent for the month. Danny Campbell Soup, which I mean, this is not a healthy looking chart, right? Uh, up eight eight percent for the month. Uh, Colgate Palmolive uh, up 12 percent for the month. Uh, XLP is up uh, nine and a half percent for the month. Those are the consumer sta uh, mm -hmm. consumer staples, staples, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. discretionary staples, mm -hmm. much different. Mm -hmm. Apple. So we'll, now I'll bring it back to most people's favorite stock. Apple, 8.5% for the month so far as of the 29th. Tesla, uh, down, down, almost 3% for the month. And so it, it, it had me thinking, well, to, like, how do you spot those turns, right? And there's a number of ways to do it. You can just use... Um, Excel, like you could look at the um, the stocks here, like XLU, okay, or uh, you, you know, I mean, excuse me, not the stocks, the ETFs, ETFs of the sector, utilities. Thank yeah. you, XLU. You could just go through like the eight or nine major sectors I mentioned. Um, XLC. Oh, here's communications XLC, and you can see like XLC. Just look at this chart. XLC doesn't look as good as XLP, and you're like, well, Tim, how would you spot that turn? And I and I always come back to you need a trigger like you could do um an 821 cross here okay and so and the relationship between the staples and discretionary yes yeah yeah and so there's a lot of things you can do but you have to have a path to do them on and that brings me to i'm going to lead off the resolutions so new my year's resolution. new year's resolutions and so my new year's resolutions is to trade trade much less 
and and find only my and, and just trade my specific setups. Are there exceptions to every rule? Yeah, you don't want to lock yourself into a box uh, that you can't maneuver out of. But what you're trying to do is limit your choices. And when you limit your choices, what you're actually doing is limiting your FOMO. And that's your fear of missing out. Because I mentioned the Dogecoin earlier, right? And when you see somebody has taken $8,000 and made it a billion, you're like, well, that's a bet I would make. But that's a bet in hindsight, right? Mm -hmm. And so this time of yeah, year... Yeah, 8000 going to go to zero in a day. There you go. And so let me show you some of the, some of the top stocks. I mean, that is like red 34. On yeah, Roulette yeah. Rail. Yes, that, that's that's exactly. He's the it. one out of fifty that got it. Yes, yeah. so perfect. Some of the top stocks of twenty twenty one. Okay, like I mentioned uh, just now, the consumer staples are leading the month of December. Mm -hmm. Like by the way, that that's that's a hint. It's not super super bullish. That's that that's a hint that um, that it, our market's going to continue in that trend in twenty twenty two. I present that to you for a couple of reasons, because this is the first year since 2016 that the S&P has led the NASDAQ. Most people don't realize that. Uh, the NASDAQ is so powerful. It's such a powerful force. Those top 100 stocks that, are, got the best that make stocks, up the yeah. QQQ that this year has been different. 2022 stock nerves is going to be the first year since March or excuse me, April of 2020 that there isn't stimulus in the markets. Say that again? 2022 is gonna be the first year since March of, gonna be the first time since March of 2020, or April of 2020, that there isn't stimulus into the markets. And I'm talking, consumer stimulus is gone. Like all of the What do you d define your stim the consumer stimulus? Those, you... those checks that were being... Okay, the, the, the checks the government's sending to the individuals. Got it. Yeah, got this it. is the okay. first year okay. that there's going to be no business stimulus and no consumer stimulus. That If you don't think that's a big deal... I, and, and by the way, what have we gotten for that stimulus? What, what has that stimulus bought you? 2.1, 2.3% GDP down from 7 what does that stimulus got you uh, when I look at, uh, excuse me, AAL? The airlines, some of the biggest beneficiaries of uh, taxpayer stimulus, UAL. Uh, Southwest, uh, no love. Uh, so. It also brought the lowest labor participation rate since 1969. There you go. Uh, can you repeat that one more time, <clears throat> yeah. Alex? You economic lowest... guru? Yeah, it brought the lowest labor participation rate since 1969. So my my goals, my 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 one financial, my one trading resolution is to, is to trade less. And I want to show you some reasons why here. I want to delve into this by using the top some of the top stocks of 2021 as my example. Okay. So and I'm going to use the Dow. The Dow, Danny. The thirty boring stocks, right? Oh, let's. I got, Bryce waited to boot. I got, I got to look at my notes. I had to. Do, <laughs> had to look at. No I can do all this off the top of my head because I've got the information down. But I need to look at my notes here. Let me look at MSFT here first. So I'm on year-to-date charts. And look, you can do this. Microsoft. Stock. Yeah, you could do this. Um, just if your stock nerds set your drawing tool to. Uh, sorry, set your set your set your drawing tool to stun. No, it's just uh, the little stick figure here. Okay, trend line. And then if you want to see how what stocks uh, are doing, you can just click, and then you just bring it down, and you're like, okay, that's the beginning of the year. And you can see that it, Microsoft is up almost fifty four percent for the year. Okay. Well, how do you get a bunch of stock? Like, how can you find these stocks? This is what I'm going to, Danny. This is what I'm going to answer. I'm not just going to go over a bunch of stocks that went up in price and then go, oh, well, wanna, hindsight. I want to find those. Well, that, that helps nobody. I'm actually going to give the answer. And I'm going to show stock notes and market lovers how to do it. And my goal is to trade this setup. I'm getting, I'm, I'm building to a crescendo. Okay. Okay. So Microsoft up in 2021, uh, 50, 54%. Uh, HD. HD Home Depot uh, up uh, up uh, fifty almost fifty three percent. Goldman Sachs nobody likes Goldman Sachs. By that I mean their personalities. Uh, Forty seven percent. Uh, let's see. How about uh, UNH United Health? 
Okay, United Health up 43%. And now I'm going to step out of the Dow. Those are just the top Dow. But what, what about a Ford, right? Everybody wants to find a Ford, right? Like a Ford up 143% for the year. Look at that chart, Danny. Lower left, upper right. Okay. How about uh, uh, everyone's going to talk about energy this year? Um, continental Resources, uh, one of the top gainers. There's a ton in the energy space. I literally just picked Continental. 174 well, for yeah, now. Yeah, because they got crushed a year before. FTNT, yep. FTNT. Uh, 138. Well, Danny brings up a good point. So should we just buy, which is known, by the way, as a dogs of the Dow type strategy. Mm -hmm. You just buy the beaten down names. You know, the, the, the they have earnings and whatever. I don't know what the dogs of the Dow formula is. And you just buy the beaten down names. And I say, no, that's a terrible strategy because typically those, you know, there's a reason why these stocks are getting beaten down. What makes you think there's a rebound? I've got a better way to do this. And believe it or not, the answer came to me literally came to me through my email like i had i had the idea to craft this show and then uh one of our mutual friend i'll tell you off there i don't want to casey doesn't want his name uh discovered uh he sent me he goes i've been watching your videos and uh i've been um i don't know if he interacts with the um IPO club or not IPO club. It's just a community of stock nerds and market lovers like yourselves. They meet on zoom. They, it's not like a, not like a meeting. It's just a place that they can post messages and stuff instead of Twitter. Cause Twitter is not user friendly. And so uh, a couple people manage the group uh, that anyway, it's just a nice community. Anyway, I, I don't know if he's on there. I think he's on there, but I don't know if he uh, shared this, but I'm going to share it with the world. I checked with them and I can, I can absolutely share this. And so he sent me a screen and I was going to give one of my screens uh, but I'm like, no, I'm going to use this guy's screen. This guy's screen is great. And it's, I think it's what, uh, it's the antidote to this week. If, if you're at home because you're not, you know, you have off from work, uh, this week, every financial show, every, whether it's a podcast or, uh, Bloomberg or CNBC or Fox business, whatever you watch, uh, they're talking about stocks with the biggest gains, right? And all that does is give you a FOMO. And then the next thing they do is they tell you, these are the stocks that are going to be the biggest winners of 2022. But the thing is, nobody was talking that Ford was going to be the biggest, one of the biggest winners of 2021, right? Mm -hmm. Remember all that mm -hmm. talk, Danny? Well, yeah, that, not, not only that, but you talk about those huge gainers in the Dow. The Dow was not up nearly, nearly that much. That means a couple of stocks in the Dow got crushed. Right. No, yeah. So, so no, you had right. some so, that went way up, so one that went way down. You need so now I'm going to get to the answer part. Okay. You need a way to one find the ideas because you don't know how they're going to turn out. Mm -hmm. See, th this week is so difficult for so many stock for people that love the stock market because it's everybody just trumpeting how great. Ford, a Continental Resources, FortuneNet, how, how great these stocks performed. And you're like, oh, I didn't get any Ford. Ford. You know, like, oh, I want to give you that path for 2022. And the, the path that I'm giving you is exactly how I'm going to be trading in 2022. I keep saying 2022 so I know what year it is because I'll keep saying 2021 uh, about three months into 2022. So it starts with you have the idea. Like, let me just show you Ford. So here's Ford. And... I have the trigger event marked as, do I need to zoom in, Danny? Or can you see that? Uh, you need to zoom. Okay. Well, I'm looking at it on a smaller screen. That's so. all right. Here, I'll, I'm going to zoom into the beginning of the year. Voila, like magic, right? <laughs> and so uh, you need a trigger event that gets, so let's pretend that you found Ford through the screen. I'm going to offer stock nerds and market lovers. Just email me, Tim at Revere Asset. I'll send you the screen. It's good on Thinkorswim. If you're like, oh, I don't have a Thinkorswim account, open one. It doesn't cost a dime to open a one, and you can get the ideas in whatever platform, or send them to Danny, and Danny will trade them for you. And so, <laughs> uh, so you can see Ford here on a daily chart has this white bar, and that white bar, very simplistically, if you want the long explanation of everything that goes in that bar, uh, I'll introduce you to the IPO club. It's 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 a five eight cross, okay, and um, you get the five eight cross. And then you start to get what is known as the moving average stack a couple of days later, 5, 8, 21, 34, 50. And that starts the ascent of Ford. But this is a daily chart, right? And so this daily chart is incredibly tough for me because um, look at this. Like you, you give up a lot. You know, you, you, you start crossing below the moving averages. When do you take profits? Like that, all that stuff comes into play, right? 
And so like then I switch to like I've got Ford here from the beginning of the year and you can always use these ATR charts like we've talked about ad nauseum. I'm not going to go into that because we have addressed that in my videos ad nauseum. Any questions on it, stock nerds? 855 Real Wealth. Danny can interpret them for you. Uh, or Tim or asset.com doesn't matter. You can use that, but a daily chart in uh, the way the markets have been, it's sucking you into more trading, right? And so I come here. I go, where can I find some peace uh, and some peace and quiet on, say, a weekly chart? So I'm going to set this to year to date. And can I find that same kind of action here? So here's eight, here is Ford. There's two ways to look at this chart. You can say, okay, I'm going to buy off the 21. <clears throat> we have a call. 21 call. exponential moving Yes, average. thank you. Uh, the 21. Or I can wait till I get that 5A cross on what? A weekly time frame. But what that's so the twenty one <clears throat> exponential is a daily and the five well are these all both weekly these are all weekly they're all weekly like you're just changing the okay, time okay, frame okay, okay so you can you can tra you can look for that setup on the weekly chart and look you're like well that's up one hundred forty three percent well what, what's the white bar from here to where we are currently that's about sixty percent if you just waited for it but you could you could have got it down here at the twenty one like there's a number of ways to do it even though it's a weekly chart. When people are talking these amazing gains that they're going to have in all these different stocks, that, and they, they, they're just reporting the news, right? Let's pretend they don't even have them. Most of them don't. <laughs> you, yeah, you have to hold those for the whole year. Some of these stocks you don't want to hold for a whole year. You want to be able to get off the train. And the easiest way to get off the train is, did I, on a weekly, did I close below the 21? If the answer is yes, it might be time to step off the train. If you close twice below the 21 on a, on a daily chart, that's a good indicator to step off the train. You can apply, uh, or apply, excuse me, apply forward logic by using the ATR charts and go third band on the daily or weekly. It's time for me to really skedaddle. Extend it or sell it. Yeah, half. exactly. Yeah. There's a number of ways to manage it. But how do you achieve this level? Well, I instead of just giving you the screen first, I think it makes more sense to apply the logic to get you there. Some of these things you don't want to hold. Like, let's look at um, Piton. How did Piton start off the year? Let's get it on. This is a uh, this is a weekly chart. This is year to date. This is look. This is great. This starts out in a weekly flat base, and then it just all goes to hell. Peloton's down over 100% for the year. Do I have that right, somebody? I, you know what, I could do that. No, that's, no. You, that can't, you right. can't be oh. down over 100%. <laughs> Thank you. 77%, <laughs> I'm sorry. 77, that, thank you. See, Danny, that, now I'm smarter. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you, Tim, you can't be down over 100%. That's that, good. That means you don't usually uh, typically short stocks. You're usually buying to the long side. The stock. Usually, you, you can get up over 100% gain to the yeah. long side. That's the, why you're thinking like that. The, the, stock, the stock stops at zero. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, right? And so, uh, like, like, Unless you're a hedge fund. Yes. Right? And, you're, and you, you were selling puts and or selling calls, excuse me. You know, actually, actually, let me think about this. You possibly, <laughs> if you went on margin – and shorted yeah. on margin. Yeah. Theoretically, you could get a margin call, yeah. and they could make you bring up more money, and you could lose yeah. more than 100%. That's, that's happened. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what happened with GameStop. And that's what happened yeah, with yeah. Uh, Green Mountain Coffee Roast a couple of years ago with that guy. Started but with a cash fund. account, you can. Okay. So, uh, so, the, not every, so, like, how do you avoid a Peloton, and how do you find more Fords, Fortunettes, and how do you – I don't even know if it's the word staying in there longer – it's understanding the trend. And like just because you like if you got off the trend in Ford because it started to pull back, it, it, it reignited. So you don't get them off your radar. So how do you find those stocks? Like what is the radar? So let me pull the screen up. Well, so, whatever your system is, you need to stay consistent. So if you're using daily charts to get in, you need to use daily charts to yeah. get out. If you're using weekly to get in, you need to use weekly to get out. Yeah, you got whatever whatever chart, whatever time frame you took the trade on, manage on that time frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That, that's that's the, yep. the easiest way to so. So, uh, in my inbox, like the like the stock like the stock fairy showed up and dropped off a moving average stack scan. 
Now, I've had a couple of these scans that I've created, but um, I wanted to share the one that was sent to me uh, and, and show you some of the 200 results, right? I'm not going to go through 200 stocks. Mm -hmm. Thank but you. Thank you. I'm gonna, what I'm thank gonna, you. <laughs> what I'm going to do, and uh, I'm going to continue, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. What I am going to do, though, is on my uh, Wednesday night video, on the 29th video, the video for... Uh, Tonight. Yeah, tonight, but it'll 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 be for the thirtieth. But on our website, it'll show as posted on the 29th. Okay. Um, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into my trading plan for 2022, and I'm going to go into the stocks that appear on the screen because it's super interesting to me. Uh, and and I'll show you this. Uh, so you, all you do is you pull this up. You, I have it uh, lilac to lilac here, and so I'll start with Airbnb, and I'm starting from a weekly year-to-date time frame okay so time frame year-to-date weekly okay i've got my things linked up here and all you do is you start is that a setup is that a setup we'll go a little bit more in depth like this aig something to watch potentially uh but as i get to um let me see i'm going to try to get down to bp there we go bp that's a setup well why is bp a setup this is the heads up you got the heads up eight five cross okay you're now, uh, you're waiting for the five to come through the eight. You've got the eight, the 21, the 34. BP is a setup like right now. Is it actionable right now? No. And by the way, to those listening right now, these videos are for what? Why is it not actionable? You, well, hold on, Danny. Okay. Let me give the disclaimer that these videos are for your edification purposes only. Education. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever to be misconstrued as advice. If you want advice, any advice, seek advice. Stick the man in the red mock turtleneck. <laughs> Otherwise known as Stocky Claws. It's a good color. <laughs> Stocky Claws. Yeah. I like that. So well <laughs> delivering late gifts to the people. That's right. So, well, why is it not actionable right now? It, I want to see a little bit more uh, coming off the 21. You're down here at 29. 29, let's see, 20, what is the, the pink line here? I can't get it. I want to see it more. Let me show you on the daily chart why it's not actionable just yet. So change it to a daily, and I'm going to zoom in here. I want to see, see this this line right here, Danny, on the daily chart. That fifty day that's above. You get your writing. I get, see I'm that. Little, yeah. So the, the the stock is capped by that right now. And and well, Tim, why would it be capped by some imaginary line on the chart that that no one else can see? Right? Like the market can't see that my lines on the chart. Why do they matter? It's algorithms. It'll go up there and probe it. And then that's the red. That's a 50 day. Yeah, what is that? It's a 50 day. Okay. It'll go up there and probe it. And so what you want to see, and as it develops on this weekly chart here, let me just, you'll see eventually that five will come through the eight. You'll start to challenge this. You'll start to challenge you can you, as soon as the five comes through the eight, you could start entering if you wanted to. And then if you take that level out right there, now you're probably off to 3029. Okay, you got thirty twenty nine. Now you've got a, Now you've got something, and so like, how do you get? Could but it could look at the far left side of my chart here. This white that white bar could have been the warning. You got some, and then it just started crossing. This is why you need rules. Like you don't know that it's just gonna, but it, it it's just gonna base like this. It could do this white bar warning, and then start start making its ascent. The white bar is the warning, or the white bar is the cross five twenty one. It had it had a it had a it had a warning, okay. or it had a it had a cross. Okay, but I'm seeing how it develops this week. You could be hitting yeah. this right now. I, I no, just, but I'm just saying the yeah. white bar is the cross. Is when yeah, it's is starting actual, to set yeah, up. Yeah, got it. But yeah. with the weekly chart, right. you're in no rush. Right. With the it's weekly. not as timely. No, you, yeah. you, it gives you time to breathe. It gives right. you time to think. And then, like, there are some great stocks with some great weekly uh, white bars. And, um, like, Tesla. Sorry. So, look, this is, we're still on a weekly chart. And, and look at what Tesla did. It danced. Like, there was no rush here. But once it, once it finally started to find its footing here, and it, wasn't, it didn't close below, it closed below the 21 there. You got another white bar. And then away you go. So it, it, the strategy begs you to do a couple things. It begs you to be a little bit patient. It begs you to have, have rules in place that keep you in the trade, get you out of the trade. It, and it begs you, uh, and you could, you could, if you don't like using moving averages, look, this, we'll set this to a weekly. This is still Tesla. We'll set it to a weekly here. And you never, look at Tesla, never closes below 
this negative one ATR here. You know, and there's the mean or the 21. As long as you're above that negative one, you're golden. Like there's no there's no rush. And and that price is like seven. What is the price here? I got to get it. It's 580, 600. Like that, you're getting that price bar somewhere around 700, 720, I believe, that, that white bar. That's a great trade. But you got you to be willing to get into it. But you got to be willing to get into it from a point of Assist, like a point of strategy. A good buy point. Yeah. 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 And so for me, I'm, I'm going to be trading triggers. I want moving average stack. Mm -hmm. I want, um, I'm going to trade more weekly charts than daily charts. Mm -hmm. And I want to be in trades a little bit longer. I don't, you know, if they hit quick, oh, no one's complaining. Yeah, yeah, then it's like, yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I want to let the market work itself out. Because th this, th this market is... Uh, I think is frustrating, mm -hmm. you know, three, three strong days. Like the market's just mellowing out here, but um, you're not, you're not really making, you're hitting new highs. It's weird. You're like, you're hitting new highs, but I don't feel like you're making much progress. And so uh, I think uh, what, what cures that by the way is sharp pullback. Mm -hmm. and, and you touch it again, pull yeah, back, touch yeah. it again, pull back. Get, get, get a sharp pullback and then find your entry so but but uh, let me put the tim turpert on real yeah. quick so for using the weekly charts that's a longer term strategy yeah so if you're not wanting to don't have time to watch it as much or you, you just want less trading it, it, it but you're gonna have to deal with uh, a, a bigger drawdown if it happens to happen less trading bigger drawdown well, hang on it, on the shorter term yeah. on the daily charts you're gonna have much more trading because you'll get in and out more but you'll have more. You'll have a little I, bit more whipsaw, but you'll have less drawdown, and it and 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 you may get shaken out a little bit early, where you make some money, but you don't get as big of gains. I disagree on the drawdown on the weekly slightly. If you buy with a trigger like a five eight, like at the, around the mean, mm -hmm. if you're buying around the mean, um, I don't I don't think the drawdowns that if you're buying extended from the mean. No matter if you're on a daily chart or a weekly chart, your drawdown will be greater as most things pull back to the mean. Right. But if it starts to go up and then it rolls over to go down, yeah. it takes longer to trigger a weekly moving average than it, by definition yeah. than it does but a it, daily. And that's what I'm going to cover. I mean, that's just tonight. mathematical. And that's what I'm going to cover in tonight's video, like yeah. in the follow on. Yeah. Well, what are your what are your profit? Like where where do you take where do you end the trade? Where do you get out? Well, that's the yeah. Yeah, like where 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 is your proactive uh, profit taking, or more importantly, where are you stopping out? And that's what I'm going to cover tonight mm -hmm. a little bit more in depth because I think that. And by the way, there's a couple different ways to do that. In that, one is strictly defensive, so you protect capital, right? And one is proactively yeah. harvesting profits, and you don't have to do them all. But like if it get yeah. like you said, if it gets extended, mm -hmm. but you still want to give that stock room to run, maybe you take half off or a third yeah. off, and then let you know. And so the way the markets are presented to you, the way the markets are presented to people through media that you buy and you hold and they do, and you're not he, you you might hear about the big losers this year like more people spend my, more time on the winners i find they don't spend as much time on the losers i don't think you have to hold ford forever like holding ford was a losing proposition for years oh yeah so was microsoft my, yeah. for 18 years microsoft yeah. had money and so right like you don't there you don't have to just buy and hold to get these kind of returns you can buy and, and I think have less risk if you, uh, I mean, so, some people say actively manage like they say uh, a cuss word. And I, I don't think of that as a case. Like it, I, and actively manage is so many things to so many different people. Like, you know, 10 trades a year. Well, for, people tend to think of day trading as actively. Yeah, and right. it's not. Right. It, yeah, right. And so I think of actively managing as having. having Making a, adjustments when necessary. Well, having a strategy that, get, that finds you the stock. Having a strategy that that identifies how you why you would get into it. For me, I'm I'm explaining that's the five day cross, and then I'm going to put it together tonight with okay, well what would that look like all together with combining now. Uh, we got the trigger to get into the chart on a stock. How do you get out of it? Mm -hmm. Like anybody can get you into a stock. It's how do you get out of it? <laughs> mm. And and uh, that, do your Bill O'Neill impression. I uh, love that. Uh, yeah, anybody like, can. Oh yeah, Bill. That was like one of the first things Bill said to me. I was sitting in his office, and he and he goes, you know, 
anybody can get you into a snot team. Who can get you out? <laughs> You're so lucky to have sat down with that guy. Oh, it. it I don't it, think people, the listeners, may not know who that is. Yeah, uh, who is Bill O'Neill? Oh, uh, yeah. one, one of the greatest investors to ever live. Uh, mm. Still walks there the earth. Um, Bill uh, and I didn't know it at the time. I fell in love with IBD. Um, to, I don't even know if I want to tell the story, but I, I, I maybe on another time. Yeah, investor business. Yeah, anyway. and so uh, I was fortunate enough to have written a letter. Uh, Bill answered it and uh, hired me, and then everything yeah, out of I, the Marines. Yeah, okay. right, right out of the Marine Corps. And so Bill O'Neill was one of the great. And that, and thus was t- Tim's transition from manual labor. To using his cerebral. Yes, yes, very much so. Uh, the office job, yeah. And and by the way, the stock nerd that sent the screen to me, I, I met him in Boston uh, when I when I was working for IBD. Uh, I met him mm. at, a, I think I was hosting the event. Not 100% sure. But uh, I met him, met him up there in Boston when he lived up there. But the, look, you need, it, it's a couple components that you, that you have to arm yourselves with. And it, it, because I think what happened last year to a bunch of folks and this is just anecdotal, right? Because of the way people write to me or the way or, or DM me and whatnot, that whole trading um, explosion happened at the beginning of the year with GameStop and mm-hmm. um, uh, AMC and whatnot. And I think it just threw people. You know, because everybody was, if everybody's, you remember that E Trade commercial mm-hmm. in the sure, early 2000s? Sure. I got money coming out the wazoo. And, and well, there was a big dichotomy last year yeah. during COVID. Yeah. Because you had the COVID stocks like Peloton that did yeah. great. And then you had these other conventional stocks, quote, conventional stocks that got it hammered. And then this year, you had just kind of the opposite. But, you, you know. but um, the AMCs and the, and, and the GameStops, I believe, threw everybody off. Mm-hmm. And I think that. This what I just described will allow you to weather any FOMO storm. And like, hey, did the stock appear on my screens? Okay, great. You're going to miss some trades. Like, you have to be okay with missing out of some trades. You have to be okay with not being in the the chat room trades or the water cooler trades mm-hmm. or, or the things that people are talking about. You're not always going to be right. You don't have to like you yeah. always say. You don't have to touch all the water. No, you don't have to touch all the water. Like, you just just trade. Like, just, just have something, like, and every day ask yourself, is the reason for being, if you like, let's say you went at Ford, like, is the reason for, or BP or whatever, is the reason for being in this trade still valid? If the answer is yes, you're still in the trade. If the answer is no, then you have to question why are you still in it? And then that becomes the psychology of the trade. Mm-hmm. And, and look, all these lessons I talk about are hard learned on my own. You got to you got to lose your own money to figure it out, you know. Like, you, like that's why I like I like listening to other people's tales about it. But eventually, it comes down to you stepping into the arena and putting systems in place that help protect you from whether it's yourself or other market forces. And so, I could tell you that I think a a nice swift correction is going to come, probably the third week of January. I believe it, whether it comes or not. I don't know. Uh, I think that it's interesting that staples are leading. Right now in December. And staples continue to lead. That's not a Super Bowl sign. Uh, right. I think it's really dangerous that we have the potential for uh, the interest rates in 2022 to ebb higher just naturally through actions of the Fed with lower growth. I think it's a warning that you shouldn't just trade on logic. I think your logic sucks. I think lo- applying logic to the markets. Uh, logic is great in hindsight to the markets, but there's no reason with the great <laughs> so with the great opening that American Airlines is one of the dumpiest stocks man has invented. Like these airlines should be trading better, and they're not. But travel's going to open up. It's this is just uh, this chart isn't just the latest variant of this mutating virus. This chart is awful. And it's been awful. And this this it's is hard not, to pay for jet fuel. It, 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 it doesn't matter what it is. Of, it's the, it's labor. Get that jet fuel there. There's a lot of things going on. This, their margins are squeezed. These are labor costs. And yeah, labor is labor is not going down. So once you pay somebody something an hour. That is now their worth. Well, well, for, forget all. But, but yeah. what you're saying is, look, you got energy costs going up. Their cost of fuels going up. Yeah. Their cost of labor's going up. And fear about the new COVID variant and, <clears throat> and canceling sh- flights. It's a perfect storm. But that's b- beside the point. You'll see all that on the chart before in real time, be- while it's happening or before. That's exactly the point. Like yeah. if you bought the airlines in 2021, thinking logic, 
Yeah. Where, are, where are you? Like I, I think, they had a few good months. And, then and, and, and that's why I, I think screening is so important. There are charts on this. There are, there are stocks on this screen. I'm trying to find one. Uh, like, I Go don't to know. AutoZone. Go to AZO. One second. I don't know what thing. Camco is. I would have never guessed that. A- oh, is AZO, AutoZone, AutoZone on this Zone? list? Uh, yeah, I saw okay. it before. Let's do it. Like, you don't, don't apply logic. Look at this don't, thing. don't even try to think <laughs> about don't it's even a monster. Try, don't even try to think about it, but it's extended. The the beauty of yeah, no, I'm not saying yeah. by here. I'm just saying yeah. the logic. I would have never guessed. Oh, you know what I mean. I thought they right. would have been hurting. Well, with they're... hindsight, you can think. Look, it's so hard to find new cars or yep. even new cars. You got to fix the car you got. Yeah, or or like look, yeah. Aflac is on this list. AFL. Well, mm-hmm. more more people clearly are uh, not going to get hurt because Nick Saban's pimping uh, <laughs> Aflac, and so they're not going to have to pay out. By the way, this this chart right here. You don't here, want one of those blue jacket, powder blue jacket. Is it powder uh, blue? It's, it's Deion know. Sanders. It's, yeah, it's yeah, Nick yeah. Saban. There are a couple winners. Probably. Yeah. This is a beautiful chart. Man, is a good looking chart. Look at this. Trying, trying he's to sponsored get... by them now? He got a. He... Deion. Deion is part of the Aflac world. Yeah, he, man. he joined Nick. Yep. Yeah, he well, Nick finally oh, wow. gave him a blue jacket if you follow the commercials. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is a beautiful looking chart, and so um, don't don't assume. I think that that is so apropos for 2022 that if you've got your setup, moving average stack, uh, I need a trigger, I need a place to go find these names, and then and then away you go. And then the, look, there's going to be a deep pullback in 2022 at some point, and you're not going to have. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to have the luxury of this beautiful moving average stack and some stocks that I want. And then, but you have to have confidence in your ability to say, okay, this is not working out. This isn't working out. I mean, you got to be able to fly the aircraft here. You can't pay to be right. Yeah, and so you still can apply the things that you're, you're doing like trigger event. Um, are, am I above or below the 21? Like there's a lot of things that you can apply, but if your structure come, you know, if 80% and 90, 85% of your trades come from the structure, then you start playing jazz between the notes and then the whole world, I believe unlocks for you, but I'll be trading a ton less. And, um, uh, I'll, I'll keep people abreast of how it's going, but like I, I really like. We'll see if it works out. Like this Amazon chart on um, this. Is, look at this weekly chart of Amazon. Um, super interesting to me. This is just one big consolidation. Is it lagging? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it, it, it's it, it's just consolidating. And so uh, the, these these they'll get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And tighter. Until one of two things happens, if the Nasdaq wants to move higher, uh, Amazon most likely you know will move will move with it, and this thing just explodes, or uh, or. But you haven't got your pitch yet. You haven't got nope. the cross. No, you just okay. you're just waiting for the pitch. Yeah. Just wait for the pitch. And by the way, God, heaven forbid, I introduce a monthly chart, but like, I mean, look at that. <laughs> That's just that 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 kind of consolidation. When I see that, you have to understand. Hey, Scott O'Neill explained this to me once, and it, it just it unlocked it for me. And so, um, I was with Scott, and I don't know if it was in his office or what, but we were talking, and he said, "Do you know how that happens?" I was like, "That's a really beautiful consolidation on some chart." And he goes, "Do you know how that happens? They're not selling the shares, the people that matter." I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, "Well, I mean, there's all this buying and selling going on." but you have to understand how stocks are bought and sold by the institutions. There's a buyer out there, right? So the portfolio manager, whether she or he's doing it themselves or they've got a, they got, you know, they give limits out there. Like I'm going to buy, okay, this, this is my high, this is my low. I need an average price of, I'm making this up. I need an average price of 3350 when you're done. So they figure out where can we buy it? You know, drifts up. Well, what causes a stock to drift lower? The absence of buyers. When I say that, I have a feeling. Absence like of institutional buyers. Absence, abs- yeah, absence of buyers. So the buyers disappear, and the stock just drifts a little bit lower till it gets in range, and then they step in. This is one big institutional base right here. And I'm just waiting. I mean, it's no coincidence. Like, look, it, it just gets up to these highs, and then you think it's going to go? No. I think it's going to go? No. So, all right, Danny's telling me to wrap it up. 
What's your Danny? Let me turn we, it over. We 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 we've done that. We we you made your point. Let's go. All right. <laughs> and that I want to talk about the Fed, man. Go oh, ahead, Danny. Let's go. Danny needs some Danny time. I need some Fed. Danny yeah, time. Yeah. Give it to the Fed. What's your well, what you, you, you were asking me what you think they should do because we have a little bit of a disagreement. Because see, I believe the Fed causes all these problems. Sure along with Congress. And so it's their loose money and their loose policies to begin with that causes these bubbles. And then if you try to tighten when you have inflation or when you have devaluation or, you know, whatever the problem is, or you're not getting the growth that you think you should out of the stimulus you're putting in there, then how do you unwind it? And there, therein lies the problem. There, you can't, it, you, it's, once you, leverage works both ways, so you really can't unwind it. So when you said there was going to be no stimulus this next year, I, I realized what you meant was to the individuals right. and the people and the companies, not the Fed. The Fed is still going to do stimulus. They said they're just going to do half as much buying, which is still $60 billion with a B a month. So if you, if you, if you multiply that, that's still over half a trillion dollars right. a year in bond support and interest rate support. And then they said they're going to raise interest rates a couple times in 2022, a couple t three times in 2022 if things hold, mm -hmm. uh, a couple times in 2023 and then two more times in 2024. They can't even forecast 3 months out, so all of that is total fantasy. The the couple interest rate hikes in 2022 were close enough in that those are probably on the table and they had kind of already said it out loud, and so it's going to be really hard to not do it now because then it'll really spook the markets. So I do think they are going to raise rates a token a couple times in in this year. And they should, by the way. Okay. So if you're asking me what they should do, you were talking about negative interest rates in Europe or wherever. We are actually the most fiscally responsible central bank in the world at this point, which that's a really low bar because mm -hmm. they're all just printing money and buying assets to help support the markets. But if we're the most fiscally conservative, the most, uh, the big the adult in the room, are, it's going to, it's actually a strong dollar. Everybody thinks a weaker dollar is great for the economy. That's, that's, that's the, what they teach you today in the last 20 years. That's what they teach in, in, in the, in the colleges and universities and in MBA schools and stuff. That's actually not true. Weaker dollar gives a little boost in the arm, gives you a little shot in the short run. But a strong currency in the long run actually entices people to invest there. It brings money from overseas and capital in, uh, investment in your own country. Because if you've got a stronger currency or a stronger economy, a, a more conservative place somewhere else to invest, like you said, money will flow where people think they can make a decent return. Right now, People are buying our treasury bonds from overseas because they're getting a negative, literally a negative return elsewhere, which is still hypothetical. So nobody really knows what's going to happen. So even though our interest rates are very low, you can still get some interest here. And remember, there's lots of, 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 of different kinds of institutional money that has to have fixed income. They can't have all equity. So the Fed being a little bit more hawkish, if that's the term we want to use, or a little bit more conservative, is actually good longer term for our markets. Would it cause a little bit of a hiccup? Maybe. Mm -hmm. If they do it slowly, though, which I guarantee you they're going to try because they don't want to upset the apple cart. If they do it slowly, I think the economy can absorb it. I think the really the black swan or the really thing that we got to worry about is China. I talked about that on last week's show about all their real estate problems there. They're having a major real estate bubble and whether they can paper over it by printing money or not, it still remains to be seen. So our, our markets and our economy is the strongest in the world right now. And so there's no reason to have money. Like if you got the, those pie charts, asset allocation, I wouldn't be having emerging market or international exposure because why would you, if you can get paid, cause you got more risk over there. You only not only have their return risk, then you got the currency translation risk. So you got two forms of risk if you can make more money here. But as long as our, as long as they do taper this gradually, it will be, I think will be okay. Now the, the big question is, does inflation keep running? And part of that is 
the supply chain issue, which really has nothing to do with the supply chain. It's because uh, environmental th- uh, rules in California literally took half the trucks off the road this year. So l- over half the, the, the trucks cannot move product from the docks to through California. And so that really is the, the biggest glitch. So that coupled with money printing, which is what real inflation is, is causing prices to rise significantly. Mm-hmm. If they can get a handle on that, then I think we'll be okay. Now, here's the funny thing. The Treasury expects 2.6 inflation next year. Right now, we got 7 8%. So how do they expect to cut that by 6 7%? Without really raising interest rates, one and a half, two percent. I, I know what you're saying, but percentage wise, to go from seven percent to two percent or two and a half is a huge decline. That's what I'm saying. That's fan. They're, they're, is, it, is it over a hundred percent? Yeah, but I, seriously, that's like a that's like a sixty, seventy percent, seventy percent drop in inflation right now, and they think they're going to pull it off. Well, first of all, remember their target rate was two yeah. percent, and they hit eight. So obviously, they have no clue. I mean, they've already proved over, and it's not just this year. It's not last year. They caused the economic crisis in 2008. Greenspan caused a tech wreck bubble in 2000. They've been causing these boom and buff cycles. I'm sorry. They need to be more stable and quit trying to manipulate the economy. The economy is a wonderful mechanism and self-adjusting regulator of itself. I mean, you need enough you know, regulation so that you don't have a bunch of cheaters or, you know, you're fairly environmentally friendly, all that kind of stuff. I get that. But with them, because they always stimulate, but they never slow things down until it's too late. Right. That's the problem because they like, they like, they, they want the punch bowl. And so they let inflation get out of hand. And then once it's way out of hand, then they try to pull it back. Well, by that time it's too late. So they've got a, they've got a tough, uh, year in 2022. But if you're asking me what the right approach is, what they said is the right approach, unless you, re- I mean, really the right thing to do is being even more aggressive and raise rates quicker and taper more, more quickly. The problem is you'll cause a market correction or even a bear market with that. And they don't want to do that. Um, that gives them the cover. They do that. That gives them the cover to stop raising rates, stop tapering, Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. China may be the excuse they need to stop tapering. Maybe. But Perhaps. but 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 the whole point is um and and getting back to your stock thing real quick the consumer discretionary normally wants to be outperforming the staples. Right. And that hasn't been happening the last month or two, which you yeah. pointed out on those charts, Procter & Gamble and all yeah. those. And that's okay for a month or two because sometimes they get out of whack. They're not perfectly correlated in line. Right. But if that continues for the next two or three, four months, that's a bear, That's not a good sign for the market. That's a defensive posture. Yeah. And so the question is, is institutional money foreshadowing that? Or is this just a couple-month anomaly that's something you need to pay attention to very hard to tell i tell you what we'll combine uh segments here uh i'd like to know hunter if he has any uh, new year's resolutions and then uh whatever whatever you want to cover hunter yeah so i actually um i do have some new year's resolutions uh um, trading resolutions and i honestly tim mine are somewhat similar to yours i think i could have traded less but i think there's a lot of people that probably feel that way about this year just because there was a lot of really sharp moves down in individual stocks, not, not, not necessarily so much the S&P uh, or the Dow, but I mean, there was a, a lot of individual stocks where you accumulated you know, a 10% gain, say over two, three weeks a month, uh, only to wake up and be down six, seven, eight percent in one day. So it's, I think there's a lot of people that have probably been stopped out and chopped up or puked up some stuff that they, in hindsight, wish they wouldn't have. Uh, but I think those are really good. And I think looking at weekly charts, particularly this year, could have helped a lot of people uh, because there was some really extreme volatility on individual stocks, like I said. But if a lot of times when you pull it back to a weekly, things uh, get put in a little bit more perspective for you. So I think those are two great ones, Tim. Uh, And I guess this kind of goes on the back of what you said, but buying right allows patience more often than not. And so what is buying wrong? Buying wrong is often FOMO. Buying when things are really extended just because it's going up, like buying Tesla when it was at 1200 just because it was breaking out. Uh, you know, those 
that would be characterized, in my opinion, as buying wrong. Therefore, if a shakeout or a pullback comes, you're much more likely to get stopped out yourself. Um, so that's one for me is buying right allows patience. And for me as a personal investor and trader, there's a lot of times where I should have been more patient with the position I had. I ended up moving on or uh, selling it too early. And if I had just gave it another week or two, because it really didn't violate, you know, rules like it, it should have, like it, for example, maybe something sliced through the 50, but it closed above it by the end of the day, things like that. Um, I think being patient can benefit a lot of people. And then this is one thing that I think pretty much everybody struggles with or, or deals with. And that's not allowing your trading or investing or performance to severely alter impact your mood uh, or how you go about your daily life. And it's a really hard thing to do because if you're having a, a tough time in the market, it's hard not to be down on yourself. If you're doing really well. Uh, you know, you feel like you're on top of the world. And I think it's a constant battle for me is just trying to stay neutral and middle ground, no matter if I'm, you know, up a ton on the day or having a bad day. Either way, I think not allowing it to e expand beyond your, you know, the trading hours of the market can really help you as well. And it's something that I have to work on. It's, it's hard not to, Tim, like you said, it, it can dominate your mind, mm -hmm. uh, but it's important to give your mind a break, I think. So I know those are not ticker symbols. It's not red meat, nope. but those, my two cents here points. at the end of the year. Um, however, I do have some wonderful ticker symbols and some great research. And I actually did a screen myself Let's to look it. at some, some of the, the biggest winners of the year. I'm not going to go through all the, uh, the components of the screen uh, just for the sake of time on the show. But just what, we're, what I was looking for was a couple of liquidity and price parameters, uh, relative performance to the S&P that's pretty much in line or greater than the S&P over the last six months or so. And then uh, price percentage return year to date, uh, as well as some sales parameters looking for companies with sustainable and accelerating sales growth. And so I just wanted to share a couple of those tickers because I thought they might be names that you might not necessarily have thought would show up in this screen. So some of the strongest and the more extended, I'm going to start with four of these names. Uh, and Tim, if you can pull these up, that would be great. Alcoa is the first AA. Yep. So this is, has been one of the stocks in the market for the month of December, as you can see there. Uh, really, really strong move. Uh, we've also seen steel in general kind of start to shape up. And we know Alcoa has some different exposure uh, as opposed to like Nucor and steel dynamics. And that's reflected in price. The second name, Tim, is CF. I've talked about this one a good bit. Uh, very extended, as you can see. But this has been one of the strongest stocks in 2020. And what's crazy is if you look at the estimates for EPS growth on CF, the fundamentals here on some of these chemical agriculture names are just absolutely phenomenal. Um, so please go check those out if you have access to them. Really, really incredible revenue and EPS growth. Uh, TNDM is another one at the top of the list, not talked about very much, uh, but a diabetes supplies company. And I mean, just look at the chart. You've got some really great looking stuff out there. It's just maybe not the common stuff that you would think is like what we saw last year with some of that high beta stuff like and mentioned with the kind of the explosion of GameStop in early January. Uh, and the last one from the, the big extended winners here, ON on Semiconductor. Uh, so some other names here, just kind of outside of the normal names we talk about, I wanted to bring to you guys. And then I also, uh, as a part of this screen, I've got four names that are close to buyable points. So same screen, but not as extended. So closer to buyable points, Tim, when you pull up Zebra, Z-B-R-A, and these are these are constructive charts too. Is is what I want to show you here. Is these are constructive charts. Chart. There's not everything out there is looks bad, like an affirm or an upstart or something. You know, there are constructive charts. It might just be in names you're not as familiar with. Uh, Nucor. I mentioned the steel stocks are shaping up. Nucor has a really constructive chart, in my opinion. N U E. Uh, Chevron, that, and another thing here in this screen, a lot of oil stocks came up um, and a lot of that has to do with they've had good performance to end, to end the year, but Chevron has a nice looking chart. And then lastly, ODFL, Old, Old Dominion Freight Line. We've also seen the transportations ETF, Old Dominion. Uh, you can even pull up JBHT, uh, Tim. So some non-conventional names, non-growth names per se, 
that actually have constructive looking charts. They've recovered nicely along with the markets after this recent sell off. So um, just some non conventional names there. And then I, I do have a couple of more that I want to show you, Tim, just two actually. Uh, first one is FCX. And I'd like this if you could pull up copper as well. After we look at this, you can see the big move from FCX. Oh, I'm so sorry. A little bit of RS today. You're good, man. Up, You're good. Copper futures. Let me do uh, FCX again. There you go. So it looks like uh, it looks like FCX is a little bit ahead of the copper futures. Is that yep, right? That's correct. Okay, cool. Uh, and those they 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 move pretty much in tandem for the most part. FCX and and copper very very correlated. Uh, not exactly, but. You, if you own FCX, important to watch copper. And last one, Tim, Taiwan Semiconductor, oh. ESM. Uh, nobody talks about this one really all that much either. It's not the sexy names like NVIDIA, AMD, uh, what have you. But this kind of like Amazon, this is a very big company, massive earnings, massive revenue. In my opinion, it looks like there's been some accumulation within the base, particularly over the last couple of months starting to kind of shape up a little bit. Obviously, you want to see it get through that 142.2 high, uh, but I'm watching to see if it can clear the highs of this recent consolidation, the 125 to 130 area. So one of the semiconductor names that hasn't really had the explosive moves uh, like some of these others have, but to me, I like the way the base looks, kind of in the same way that you, you liked Amazon, Tim. It, mm -hmm. Sure, it's lagged, uh, but I see some positives in the way that it's setting up. All right. But that's all I got, man. That's it. I know that I feel like I just <clears throat> went through awesome. a lot, but hopefully that's that's some good stuff. No, that's really good. Let's get to Alex. Alex, any New Year's resolution and uh, resolutions? And uh, what do you want to talk about today? Yeah, mine's more option side stuff. Um, I noticed that when reviewing, do some post trade analysis. My first sale on my on any kind of option trade this year typically was my best one. So I made up a little slogan. It was, uh, don't trim small, trim all. Meaning just, <laughs> take, just close the position out and take your profit. Um, things have been so volatile that if you're right on a trade and you're up 50%, 100%, just, just get out, take the whole thing down. Don't try to squeeze more, more juice out of the orange. It, it, it typically doesn't usually work out that way. So I would say that'd be an adjustment going into the new year is uh, the first sale, just, just take it all. Uh, that's that for options. I think that's probably uh, some, some some good advice as far as uh, sell discipline. Um, I was I had a, a game plan going in today, but since I want to I want to do a different approach for the viewers. If you could pull up Peton Peloton and go to January fourteenth of this year, this is a sell signal um, on the daily. There's a it's called a, a shooting star candle. And it's when the stock in the morning, let's say it opens up, breaks out to new highs, goes up a pretty good amount, and then reverses and closes near where it opened. That's called that that wick above that small body. That's called a shooting star and should be used as a signal that potentially the stock is topping. Uh, on the on the other side of things, the the buy side. Uh, last week. I noticed the Dow Jones put in, it's the opposite of a shooting star. It's called a hammer. If you could pull the DIA or that, um, and it was hit the 200 day moving average. And I noticed, uh, keep going to the right. No, no, this was, yeah, there, there you go. It hit the 200 day moving average and the stop, the, the index closed near where it opened. That's a very bullish sign. Um, and that is called a hammer. So you can look this up on investopedia.com and you can read more about this and how these work. But those are two contrarian indicators to help you maybe get into an early entry on a stock or an index, what have you, or get out. If you have a position and you get that nasty reversal after it breaks out to new highs, maybe you should take some down. Um, it's not foolproof, but it. I noticed that these can help you get in to a turnaround or a bounce, especially if a stock is bouncing off the uh, a major moving average, like the 200 day. Actually, another hammer that I spotted was ITB. If you could pull up ITB, I'm pretty sure it put a hammer in off the 50 day. Yep, right there. See that that wick below, and then it closed with a small body. That's called a hammer. So I think the, these tools. This is all technical analysis stuff. 
a price action, you know, price pays. So this could really help for someone that is a more of a short term, medium term trader that uses daily charts. I think this could be added to your arsenal. Um, I really wanted to go over that today. I was going to sure. do a video on it, but I think this was a perfect scenario because we we're going over so many charts, uh, something different. Perfect, man. I think that's great. All right. Uh, is that all you had, Alex? I'm sorry. I don't want to. That's it. Awesome. Danny, uh, let's do the shorter of the two outros that you normally do. And <laughs> uh, then I've got one last thing. I didn't even know I had to. Folks, listen, if you like what you heard, please tell a friend, tell a neighbor. Just send them to Revere Asset. Dot com. They can sign up for our daily market uh, uh, newsletter and our market insight video and this podcast. It'll get delivered right in their inbox. We won't reach out to them or spam them in any way. Uh, we will uh, respect their uh, it's up to them to reach out to us uh, if they want any questions, topics on the show or just want a complimentary portfolio review. You can reach any of us at Dan at RevereAsset.com, Don at RevereAsset.com, Tim, Alex or Hunter at RevereAsset.com. And you can always call us old school at 855 Real Wealth. Before I forget, I do want to wish everybody sure. a safe and happy new year. Please drive safe on amateur night. Be safe, Tim. Interesting little nugget here. Do you know, uh, like Elon Musk, mm -hmm. well, I know you know this, Elon mm -hmm. Musk has been selling off big chunks mm -hmm. of stock and it always kind of makes the news. What I didn't know is this little nugget. Mark Zuckerberg sells stock every day. What? So, or, there you have it, yeah. Uh, every day, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, on a program to diversify his holdings, sells a little bit of Facebook stock. So it... it because what you run the risk of is when you go to sell, if an, an insider sells, what do they know yeah. something? They've, no, they've got to file with the SEC. <clears throat> yeah, they've got so, to have, it's called program sales. They've yeah. got to do it either weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, daily. It's got to be a schedule. And they put it, they publish yeah. it and give it to the SEC for approval. So to not run afoul. Yeah. Or, and, and, and so he can get uh, his holdings diversified from just this one thing, mm -hmm. a massive amount of Facebook stock. Well, it also helps the way he's doing it so it doesn't have a big price impact. You know, Elon Musk this last few months sold a big chunk of his Tesla stock, and that puts pressure on, on Tesla stock. That's why I, yeah, he moved the, it. Oh, yeah. He moved yeah, the that's stock. one of the reasons why I, I, yeah. put, I put Tesla in there. Yeah. Like, it's down for the month. Yeah. And uh, most of that is uh, it, it, a lot of it. You don't know how much, but a lot. Yeah, a lot is, of it is, is that. He's got to pay that. It helps pay that eleven billion dollar tax, tax bill. bill. Yeah, but yep. so Mark eleven Zuckerberg, billion. What? And if you think that's bad, just think if Elizabeth Warren gets her way, where they just have a net worth tax, whether you bought it or sold it at all, you're just yeah. appreciates. Well, now you got to sell stock to pay the tax, and you're gonna and that'll cause major I don't pressure. Think that, I, I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think it, it will either. But it's a market, and anything can happen. Yeah. But I thought it's super interesting that that I, I wonder if more CEOs will adopt what Zuckerberg does. People can uh, shy Zuckerberg for all he wants, but that 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 approach to how you, because a lot of people don't realize it, uh, there's a small window that Betsy, uh, Betsy, uh, what is um, Bezos' wife's name? What is her name? Mackenzie. Uh, Mackenzie. Uh, Mackenzie. Mackenzie Bezos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have a small window to sell. She's been selling a ton of stock, and right after earnings, when she's allowed to do so, it lo it's locked up for a period before earnings. They've been selling stock. I mean, Bezos has to pay for those rocket stocks. Right, right. Well, if that's yeah. why you need to go on a automated sale in advance with the SEC. You say we're selling this much each two weeks or each month. Yeah, well, there. Then you don't have yeah. the restrictions if well, you've I, already pre done they it. They just do right. 10B mm -hmm. five ones. Yep. Huh? They just do a 10B five one like Elon. Yeah. Or the, they can say if it touches this price within this date parameter, sell X amount of shares. They can. You can really kind of get fancy with it. Yeah, so it's not program. like, uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, so I got I, a question about that proposal on the tax thing. Is that on real estate too? It's on anything. You mean so, you mean Elizabeth right. Warren's yeah. thing on net worth? That's yes, it's going to yeah. be on. It's just going to be your pre, and that's the problem is with that. See, in the stock market, you've got a a real live price, a bid and ask every minute. With real estate, if there hadn't been a sale into, who gets to decide how much that's appreciated? That's very subjective. So illiquid too. How yeah, that's why. Well, that's it? the reason it's yeah. yeah. Well, whether you have collectibles at home, uh, baseball cards, uh, yeah. muscle cars. Uh, yeah. A lot of those we things. have list, you know, we have yeah. list. And, you know, it's the old adage. Oh, think, think about it with, um, you know, <laughs> your tax appraiser thinks your home's worth a lot more than. Well, that, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. You'll. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, folks. Well, listen, it's been a great uh, uh, show. It's been a great year. Hopefully, you guys have a great new year. <laughs> I've said it's gonna. it's been a great show, it, so it was it, a great it was show. A, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. <laughs> yeah, was good. Listen again, drive safe, and we'll talk to you in the new year on your money.